Hi everybody, today I'm going to be talking about this very weird scanner that I picked up and I finally, finally got this thing working. And I'm going to talk about what I did to get this scanner working because it's kind of interesting and I kind of wouldn't have known this if I didn't do some digging about like what a serial printer needs to be hooked up. So you probably know where I'm going with this. But let's talk about this scanner a little bit. So. This was a very early consumer flatbed, and I say very early because there weren't really a lot of flatbeds for sale in 1985 or 1986. In fact, the earliest like reference to a to the scanner in a magazine I could find from searchingarchive.org was in a December a 1985 issue of a magazine. There was an advertisement for this very exact scanner, and they were still scaling the scanner for years later. In fact, not only was this scanner in listings of computer stores for the years to follow, but also this scanner was being sold new by NEC at the same exact list price. And if you're wondering what this scanner was sold for in both 1986 and 1990, this scanner was sold for nearly a, it was sold for nearly a hundred thousand yen or essentially that much when you factor in tax. VAT or anything. So this scanner was sold from 1985 or 1986 at the very least up till 1990 at least. Very long life for a scanner that could only do two colors, black and white. And I mean that. This has image quality reminiscent of those really old photocopiers you might find once in a while at like a car repair shop or some other small business where, you know, the guy's old and he doesn't want to mess with his copier. He's got that old copier. He's still using it. That's what the image quality is like. So here's why I had the issues connecting it. Because of when this thing was made, there were three connection options. The first was parallel. I don't think much used this, to be honest. The second thing is to hook up an external printer, and here's where it gets interesting. You see, the PC-98 and the PC-88 only had unidirectional parallel ports. They didn't have bidirectional parallel ports when this thing came out. So they had to make do with the next best thing. They had to make do with, essentially, serial. And you can see the this single jumper sets the baud speed. I was able to find out that 2 is, which it's at now, is 9600, and 1 is 192... Zero, zero. So this is actually faster at 1, but pretty much all the software for the PC-98 expects 9600, which makes sense, because there were at least a few PC-98s that were made that could only do up to 9600. And this right here is what I had to do to get it working. Now, because of how Serial works, because Serial's weird, originally Serial was designed so you would direct connect into a modem, like this late... U.S. Robotics 56K Sportster modem, kind of a classic modem. This is the late. This is a late one because it says three comma. So this was a later U.S. Robotics modem, at least when these things were still relevant. So this U.S. Robotics three com modem. This was still around in 1998 or so, but. Anyway, so this uses a different serial connector than this does. It's physically the same, but electrically, this goes to a straight-through cable because you would hook it to the modem and it would do the TX and RX, and the modem would basically act as the interface. Well, the problem comes with null modem because with null modem, it's switched around. So the transmit goes into the receive port and the receive goes into the transmit port. Now, I don't know why they didn't do that with modems, but it's probably due to some old people stuff from before my time. So, quite frankly, I don't really know. It Maybe it's definitely from some computers before my time. So, it's probably something they came up with ages ago. And it's frustrating because I looked up how to connect a serial printer. And I saw people listing these on eBay with this null modem adapter. So, I picked one of these up on eBay. You could still find them new, but I went for a known brand because I know how it is with serial stuff and how dodgy it can be sometimes. Like with dodgy USB serial adapters. And then once I hooked it up, it worked just like that. So, here's something I'm scanning just for demonstration. This is a uh, piece of paper that came with some IF2769 
SCSI card. It's a little crumpled up, so you'll get to see the uh, issues that happen when you scan it. Let's close this. Yeah, it actually came up with... Uh, it came with an IF2769 SCSI card for the PC-98. And also, by the way, one more thing that's interesting is because this was serial, there were people getting this thing to work with other computers that were originally not supported because this was designed for the PC-98, like one of these, but older, and a PC-88, which was an 8-bit computer. And so this scanner was designed to work with both of those. But here's where it gets interesting. Because of that, because it used serial, people adapted this to work with other microcomputers of the era along with the Sharp X68000. Which, if you use a drawing software on that system, it will still work with this scanner that comes out with Game Boy camera looking images. And I'm not kidding. So, let's take a look at this. This is the PC9821 RA20 from the last time. But I've booted it off the external hard disk to Epson DOS 5. And the reason for that, the reason I booted Epson MS DOS 5, is because this does not exactly like. Um, some of these programs don't exactly like when you use Windows 95 DOS. Let's go. So this is MPS or multi paint system. And as you can see, we just have a blank screen. And we also have. Let me zoom in, see if it works. We have a menu here. So as you can see, that's our menu here. And I'm just going to click this on. Okay, we're just going to click here. And we get a nice menu of options that are all in Japanese. The important one here is IN502. And so we get a quick, basic option. Which lets us tell us, which lets it tell us what our scan mode is. It's mono two because we only have this, four hundred line or eight hundred line, which scans two whole pages. I don't know what DESA mode is, and it doesn't let me change it. Resolution is ninety, but we can change it all the way to two forty, which just scans fewer lines because we can only scan four hundred lines. Remember, and we're gonna hit X execute, and so the scanner is warming up. And it's going to start doing something eventually. I'm pretty sure it's warming up. Okay, that's odd. Let's see what the scanner's doing. Oh, well, look at that. It did weird stuff. Let's reset it. And let's reset the PC-98, because right now it's it's off now. So we got to reset the PC-98. And this is the fun part about using a later PC-9821 that does not have a reset switch. To reset it, you have to literally power it off, wait a second or two, because, you know, you got a hard disk. And wait quite a while for the post to finish because this has ECC RAM and so we have to wait quite a while for that post to finish nice alright let's go for take two nope alright let's try this again on Windows 98 DOS and after reseeing the cable I don't know what about Epson DOS that this drawing software doesn't like, but that's the thing with the PC-98. Whenever something doesn't work, the PC-98 thing is to just lock up on you and not tell you what's wrong. So as you can see, it's drawing every single line on here, line by line. Every single one of the 400 lines that the PC-98 can display is being drawn in with this photocopy level scanner. Very interesting. And it only scans to a fraction of the page. Essentially, what is 600 by 400. Now, if you crank the resolution up, it's actually going to scan less of it in, by the way. 
because of how the scaling works. So we're going to hit quit here. And now we can, uh, if we wanted to color, we could do that. So we're going to back out of this. And as you can see, there's our PC98 color palette because the PC98 can display 16 colors. And you get to pick which of your 16 colors you want. And then you just pick here and you could uh, draw in color, do all your sprite stuff here. If you were doing art on here. And this is what a bunch of PC98 artists did for coloring. So, And then they could dither if they wanted to, do dots. Very interesting stuff. So this is just one of the paint softwares. This was multi-paint, which was published by C-Lab, which actually made Rusty for the PC-98. We're going to quit here. And we're going to reset the system and load a different drawing utility. So on Windows 9X for the PC-98, you can just hit Control Graph and then Delete. And the same goes if you're using a TSR. So when you do that, it actually reboots much quicker because it skips the RAM test. It just does the real quick one instead of the full RAM test. And this is also what you're seeing right here is another thing you have to do if you have a PCI. You have to have several DOS partitions if you want total compatibility, which is made easy because the PC-98 DOS and Windows versions have their own bootloader which lets you select hard disks and partitions. So we're going to choose MS-DOS 5. And then we get the Epson splash screen. And now we're going to load a different tool, KID-98. So KID-98 was another popular PC-98 drawing tool. It was made by Zeit or Z's staff. That was the specific developer of it, was Z's staff. And it was called KID-98. There was actually a version for the FM Towns called Pro-68K and a version for the, uh, no, no. That was for, there was a version for the FM Towns called Pro Towns and a, pro, and a version for the X68K called Pro-68K. I'm getting tired tonight because it's, uh, 7.31 in the evening, and I had issues getting this thing working. So this was made by Z Staff or Zeit. Different user interface, you know, you right-click to select colors, and you can actually do dithered colors, by the way. And you, let's just erase that. I don't even know how to do it. We're going to erase all of this. But yeah, we can we can do dithered colors with this. It's a really interesting utility, by the way. Pro, uh, this was called Kid 98, but it's a bit more advanced than the other tool. And if we go here, we can choose what PC 98 model we have, along with our scanner. And so the scanners and printers are a lot of Japan-only printers. A lot of Japan-only printers. including some ESC Epson printers, uh, the LBPs, some uh, Canon lasers. And there's a lot of printers that these things would support. And so let's look at scanners because this is a more interesting one. We've got the PCIN 502 along with the HS7R, which is a handy scanner. I have one and I can't get it working. It supports the Epson GT6000 over parallel or serial, which is nice because I have the localized version of the GT6000, which does not have, I mean, GT6500, which does not have serial, but it can emulate the GT6000. I need to mess with that, honestly. Now, let's get this thing working. Let's hit the scan button, and we've got the IN502 selected. We get to choose our foreground color and our background color, along with uh, our resolution. And our contrast, I'm just going to hit 180 just to show you what happens. Now this software does it a bit different. It actually 
waits to process it instead of processing it in real time like the other one did. It actually accepts the data and then it waits to display it. A very different technique. We can also see what having our contrast change does to the paper too. We actually get to see more of the image and more dithering because this only does two colors. So with the resolution cranked up, we only get to see this much of the paper. And we're going to crank it down to 90. Scanning. We can see our quality is already worse, but also we get to have more of the image on it trade-off you have to make when you're dealing with this scanner. And there we go. We've got our thing scanned in. So if you were scanning a drawing, you would at least have your basic lines here with this scanner. Not as nice as some of the other scanners, but now you have your basic lines in, and now you could just, uh, now you could add your dithered colors in, because that's really cool, this actually lets you dither colors. And your, your raw colors, you could, you could color this in however you wanted, and we're just going to quit out of here. But that's how you would make art back in the day, or at least some of the stuff you do. There's actually a whole 300-page manual on this program, too, out there. It seems like a very powerful program if you could understand Japanese. But there you have it, a little bit of insight on how sprite art was made back in the 80s. Sure, this computer's not period correct, but it works. And done with a authentic period correct scanner. And there you have it. Kid 98 for the PC-98 along with MPS. And we're going to quit out of this. And That's all that needs to be said tonight. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. And yeah, there's a lot of cool PC-98 stuff out there. There really is. And one last thing. Always remember, if you're working with a really old PC-98, press this key before you turn off the power to technically flush the hard disk. The stop key which basically sends a control C and once you push it it'll actually flash on the hard disk so remember before you turn off your 98 push this key and then push the power button and then you can turn off your disk